Hi, I'm Doug with Cisco Security and with me is Raymond from Fifth Column. Welcome to DevNet Innovators. Raymond built a company that is a DevNet Innovator. I'm going to ask him now to tell me a little about Fifth Column and what you guys do. Thanks, Doug. Uh, my name is Ray Hicks and I'm from Fifth Column, AAR, a Chicago security boutique. And um, we're here to highlight a little bit about what we've been doing with Cisco security products and DevNet. Um, and how we've utilized uh, DevNet to uh, you know, further push the envelope with our product and bring some, some new and exciting innovation to, uh, to the marketplace. So I understand that in order to uh, benefit your customers, you have to pull a lot of different data into the fifth column platform. And I also understand that you've been able to utilize multiple APIs across the security portfolio. Why don't you tell me a little bit about the different APIs you've worked with in the Cisco portfolio and what you do with that data? So, uh, you know, we built a, a platform to consolidate uh, essentially event information, uh, you know, threat de intel uh, across the Cisco suite of, uh, of security products. Um, we wanted to do this in a manner to provide, you know, turnkey uh, solution delivery to our customer base. Knowing that, you know, resources are, are a challenge in the security space, um, it wasn't getting any easier to find and deploy. Uh, there was a high uh, uh, sensitivity around customer satisfaction relative to the deployment and uh, operationalizing these products, uh, for lack of a better term. And so leveraging DevNet, we were able to uh, test out our, our thesis on both delivering these solutions in a, a turnkey manner that's highly integrated under a single pane of glass, if you will, um, while also removing a lot of the overhead associated with day-to-day -day operations, maintenance, and the care and feeding that they typically take in order to provide value back to an organization. Um, so we've um, essentially taken um, you know, identity services engine integration, uh, eStreamer API integration, OpenDNS investigate API, uh, Landcope, we actually rewrote their API uh, to speed it up a little bit. Um, and we consolidate all of that information into our, our flagship product called Stackboss. Um, ultimately, the idea was, you know, if we can provide automation to build those environments, uh, uh, you know, at scale, um, and then using either software-defined networking or using traditional VPN-type connectivity, um, we could deliver the entire Cisco security suite to a customer on demand in, in less than a day. Uh, so from a proof of value or proof of concept uh, perspective, that was tremendously valuable. Um, additionally, the tools that we're talking about, the products that, that we've integrated, uh, Landcope, StealthWatch, uh, you know, ASA, Sourcefire, NGIPS, AMP for Endpoint, uh, it allowed us to use these tools as a means to baseline an organization's environment. You get a tremendous look laterally across the organization and identify not just uh, you know, risks that are related to threats to the organization, but also risks relative to the health and stability of their infrastructure as well, which may be a little bit outside the guardrails from your traditional security perspective, but risk is risk, and so it gets weighted along with all of the other findings and uh, activity that's reported by the solution set. Okay, thanks. Why don't you, um, if you could dig in a little bit on a couple of the different API integrations. I know you, you worked with ICE, the Identity Services Engine, and PX Grid. Maybe you could tell us a little bit about what type of data you leverage from that platform. Could, could you do that? Sure. Yeah, so, um, you know, ICE is uh, one of those kind of pivotal components, uh, PX Grid being, you know, the actionable you know, input into uh, interfacing with identity services engine and sharing bi-directional communications. And so, um, if we need to identify uh, an endpoint based on a user information that gets reported out of the um, RUA from, from uh, Sourcefire's eStreamer uh, API, for example, we can then query uh, via PX Grid what's happening within identity services engine at that particular time and tie that event back to an IP address and then leverage that information to either you know, triage the endpoint at the network layer or even potentially uh, uh, you know, kick off an automated remediation depending on what other products or tools they have deployed. So, 
With, res with respect to eStreamer, can you tell me a little bit about using eStreamer versus Syslog? Because both of those options are available on the Sourcefire Firepower platform. Uh, tell me a little bit about the benefit of using eStreamer. So uh, anybody that's worked with Sourcefire is, I'm sure, familiar with um, you know, all of the uh, concepts of artifacts, and attribution, and metadata that is added or uh, you know, post-taxonomy provided. Uh, in the console, that's only available via the eStreamer API. Syslog is just going to give you very standard normalized event data similar to what you'd get out of uh, a snort log. Okay, uh, so we wanted the, the highest quality data possible out of Sourcefire, um, and so our, our goal was to identify and map specific elements within eStreamer, um, normalize that data coming out, and then depending on how much we have uh, you know, the fire site appliance doing, um, we may turn it on and turn it off on demand uh, so we don't tax the box too heavily um, you know, as we are going through the typical uh, you know, process of removing false positives or validating event before we would generate an alert that a customer may see or that our SOC would end up ultimately having to work to remediate. Um. So what, one other uh, integration point I noticed uh, is that you actually work with the, the Firepower, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, AMP for Endpoint uh, REST API. That, that API was only uh, released uh, very late last year. It sounds like you were able to put something together really quickly with it. Yeah, actually, yeah. So we worked pretty closely with the um, immunity guys. Um, we had created a automated notification-based uh, uh, system using email notifications from the AMP cloud. Um, once the API was released, um, actually were announced, we were invited into the beta program. Uh, we've been on the AMP for Endpoint API since uh, the day it was released. Um, in fact, I think uh, we were responsible for roughly two-thirds of all the API activity for I think the first nine months it was uh, actually out there. So, um, yeah, it's been a whirlwind. Um, you know, we love all, all the exciting stuff that's coming to DevNet. Um, it's been instrumental in, in helping us bring you know, junior developers up to speed on the Cisco portfolio of products. Um, and we see ourselves using it more and more, and we appreciate the, the level of effort you guys have put into maturing DevNet and, and getting these products into DevNet as quickly as you have.